Hello YouTube, Sentinel Age here. Welcome to episode 51 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to talk about two blocks, the light bridge and the player detector. So the light bridge is exactly what you think it would be. Um, it's a machine that produces a bridge made out of light that you can walk across. It sounds pretty awesome. And if we look at the recipe, we can see it's not actually very expensive. It does require a diamond, one steel ingot, two gold ingots, two glass, and three base panels. So very cheap compared to a lot of other Rotary Craft uh, machines. If we look over here, I have one set up. Now, this thing is just pretty awesome, and producing a bridge of light on demand seems like the machine would be really expensive. As with everything in Rotary Craft, one of two things is usually true, or both of two things. Either the block itself is very expensive, and the power requirement isn't very high, or if the machine isn't very expensive, usually the power requirement's high or something else. In this case, the machine might be cheap, but the power requirement is, is really, really high. So, this amount of power right here, <laughs> 335, no, it's 33,554,432 watts, is the amount of power you have to give the light bridge to reach its maximum range. Okay? And what that means is the light bridge requires 262,144 watts per meter. Okay. So if I flick it on, we can see what the bridge looks like. It's a pretty cool thing. It grows out of the light bridge block. It's not instantly all there. Then we can walk across it. It's got neat little arrows on it showing which direction it's out coming from. It's pretty neat. And we can walk out here. Now, the maximum range of the light bridge is 128 blocks. And that's this far. Okay? Now, uh, you could technically cover 256 blocks if you have another light bridge at the other end facing this way. But there is a bit of an issue with these light bridges, um, at least in this version, which is the version in Monster Mod Pack, which isn't being updated anymore. Might be fixed in the new version for 1.7.10. But at least in this version, if you set it towards max range, the very last block tends not to disappear. Uh, it's kind of annoying. But not really that big of a deal. So we'll come back over here and we'll turn it off. So that's why the light bridge, you can't start using it right away. 262,000 and, and some odd change watts per meter is pretty hefty on the cost. Now, I just turned it off, and it looks like the bridge is still there, but it's not really there. As you get closer to it, it starts popping out. So that's another slight thing with the light bridge. Might be due to my render distance setting, I don't know. Now, another thing about the light bridge is that you can't just use it wherever you want. Um, let me go ahead and grab a piece of stone. This blue bit on the top needs to either have a, a light source above it or a view of the sky. So if I go ahead and put a piece of stone on top, now the light bridge does not turn on. Okay. Also, if I turn on any eye and set the time to midnight, the light bridge also does not work because there's no light source. However, if I place a glowstone block on top of it, now it works, even at night. So keep that in mind. It needs a source of light above it, whether that is a view of the daytime sky or a light source like a block of glowstone. So that's the light bridge, pretty much. What we're going to talk about now is the fact that because this requires so much power, you probably would not want to leave it on all the time. Um, I would ima I imagine a situation where you'd only want it to come on when you're ready to go across it, and then it would turn off once you are across. So to do that, we're going to look at the player detector. Now, a lot of mods have a player detector of some description. Um, or some type of detector that you can make yourself. This is Rotary Craft's player detector. It, it does exactly what you think it would do. It outputs a redstone signal when you get close en when a player gets close enough to it. It's crafted with a radar unit, which is crafted like this. I don't know if I showed this before, so here it is. A DC electric engine, two redstone dust, a gold ingot, and three steel ingots. Gives you a radar unit. So you add to that two lapis lazuli, uh, one gold ingot, one base panel and four obsidian gives you a player detector which I have set up over here. Um, I'll explain this in a second. So the player detector quite simple if we right click it here's the GUI you can set the detection range which is how far away from it obviously it'll detect a player when they're standing uh, all the way down to one block which is right here 
Um, now that is determined by the amount of power you give it. Yes, it does require power uh, itself. And if we go ahead and look at its entry in the handbook, pow the range on the, the player detector is simply calculated as the amount of power you give it divided by 1024. So if you put a DC electric engine on this thing, it will have a one block uh, radius, uh, a one block range. So you have to stand right next to it. Um, there's also this reaction time, 100 minus the speed of the input divided by 32. That is the um, amount of time you have to stand, it, uh, the amount of time a player needs to be stood within its range for it to actually start outputting the signal. So it's not instantaneous unless you give it enough speed. Uh, for this detector, in this example, I'm actually glad it has a reaction time because you kind of um, want it so that if, you, if you're going to use a player detector to turn on something this energy intensive, you want to make sure that you're actually uh, going to be using it. So you'd place this closer to the detector probably or, or whatever, closer to the light bridge. And then you'd have to stand next to the bridge for maybe three seconds, which is what I have this set to, uh, before it will turn on, which is probably a good idea. Um, I'm currently giving it uh, 1024 radians per second and 4 newton meters of torque, which will give it a 5 block radius, um, or a 4 block radius, and uh, the reaction time will be about 3.2 seconds. Now what I have set up here is simply a toggle latch and a timer. So all this is doing is when the player detector comes on, this will switch to here in order to keep the light bridge on so I can walk across it, and it will also turn on this timer because right now it's turning a timer off and the timer is set to 20 seconds and then once this runs 20 seconds which should be enough time for me to walk across uh, it, this will trigger and turn this back off now expanded redstone which is Rekha's mod does have a toggle latch and a timer but I have more experience using these ones so I'll just use these so we're going to turn this on and stand over here and the light bridge came on so we have 20 seconds to walk across it do, 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 do. Come say hi to the island golem. Hello, sir. And the chicken. Hello. Walk across the light bridge. Oh! Ah, I didn't quite make it. And there's a little bit of an issue here. There appears to be some sort of invisible block right about there. It is a bit weird. So I didn't set the timer long enough, and so I couldn't walk across the uh, light bridge in time. But if we come back over here, so it'll turn back on. We can see that if you could walk the distance, or if I had set that for longer, you can walk across the bridge, and then I'll just stand here and... There, see, the bridge went away. And, that oh, wait. It's kind of like, the game thinks the bridge is still here. It's a bit weird. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, it's a bit odd. So what appeared to have happened was that when I walked far enough away from it, the light bridge stopped firing. A bit strange. But uh, generally speaking, this is the light bridge. Um, so maybe it's an issue with the setup I've got. But that's the light bridge. Um, give it power, make sure it has a source of light, and it will produce a beam. Uh, and that's the player detector. Uh, set it to the range you want, give it power, and after a certain amount of time, it will start outputting a redstone signal. As soon as the player leaves the area, it stops outputting the redstone signal. So that's the light bridge and the player detector. So, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, stay tuned for future episodes. I'm Satellite, and I'm signing out.